pray that, pray that the Lord will let us enter into his presence and worship him and love him today. And, and uh, let's also remember the people that are traveling back from the meeting. And these meetings, sometimes people come from different places all over the world to these meetings. And so they have long journeys to get back home, just like they had long journeys to get here. So let's remember them in prayer that God will bless them with journeys, mercies. And it's uh, good to see Sister Beth here today. And, and your mom, uh, huh? Melanie. Yeah. And, and uh, it's good to see y'all with, with us today. And, and welcome. You were here last week, weren't you? Weren't you here a week ago? Praise God for that. So uh, thank you for being here. Uh, let's pray that God will bless them. Y'all live in Bonham. So that's a good little trip too. So let's be praying that God will bless them, help them, and uh, touch those that are sick and afflicted today. And, and uh, we've lost Brother Ross, and he passed away. And then not long after that, his wife passed away. So the people at the convention, brethren, right? That was one of their uh, uh, greatest leaders in that among the convention, brethren. So let's remember them. I'm sure that they're they're all suffering and grieved over that. That God will put His arms of love around them right now during this time and help them. And uh, let's let's go to the Lord and ask Him to help us today. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for Your mercy on us, O oh God, that You saw us, O oh Lord, safely to church today. Oh, God, and I pray that you'll bless those that are traveling from different places all over the world and, yes, and that you'll watch over and protect them. They'll be in planes and aircraft. They'll be driving. Lord, will you touch them and bless them with journeys, mercies, oh, God. Thank you for our visitors today, Sister Melanie and Sister Beth, oh, God, and bless them and cover them on their trip home. And we're thankful for them to be among us, dear God. Touch all these that are sick and afflicted among us. There's something in the air right now, Lord, and a lot of allergens. Oh, God, will you touch your wonderful people and comfort them, and strengthen them, heal them, and lift them up in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Glory to God.
dear Savior, what he had purchased for me when at Calvary he died. For all of my past and all my problems, he just said that he would supply every need supply every need supply he Just have to say, oh, that every need is supplied. He said, every need supplied. Every need supplied.
Sister Joyce Nolan, she's come down with COVID and she's pretty, getting pretty old. So let's pray that her symptoms will be light and that she won't have to go through so much with that. Sister Fricks and Sister Hack is home not feeling well. While we're feeling this, that God will supply our needs. And one of the things it says in there is healing. If you need healing, come down. We'll pray with you today. And and we'll pray right now that God will touch uh, the Neptune family and these other requests that's been brought up. Oh, God. Will you touch them, dear Lord? Touch Brother Noah. Touch Sister Nolan. Touch Sister Briggs. All these. Sister Hack. All these that are sick and afflicted, Lord. Lay your hands on them, dear God. Oh, God. Will you touch them in Jesus' name? Let the Holy Ghost move on them, Lord. Praise God. Praise God.
Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, 
there you may be also. Where was he at that time? People put that in the future, what Jesus said right there, but he, he gave you a key about that. He said that where I am, he's talking about right now, where was he right then? I, there you shall be also. And the way you know, Jesus said. Then Jesus said in another place in the scripture, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life and few there be that find it. But broad is a path that leads to destruction and many will go thereat. And that word straight, the way it's spelled right there, S-T-A-I-T, that means in the Greek, suffering way. So, we know that in this way that we've chosen, turn to the 11th chapter of, of Mark and let's look at this scripture right here. That all of us came to a certain place in our life and then we made a decision. We've heard it many times about being a crossways, a crossroads. And the fourth verse is, and they went their way and found a colt tied by the door without a place where two ways met. And they loosed him and brought him to the Lord. So you see that Jesus sent them to, on an errand and they came to a place where two ways met. How many remembers that crossroads that you came to one day in your life? That you were going your way and you were doing things your way and then you came to that crossroad right there, that place where two ways met and you had a decision to make and thank God the Lord put his arms around you and you made the decision to serve the Lord. You made the decision to follow him. And we went the right way. There are many ways out there that you can go. Many I remember in Proverbs it talked about there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of that way is death. So there's, there's ways that seem right and they're wrong. But thanks be unto God that he's going to have a people that's coming after that crossroads and out of that place right there that's being led by the Spirit of God and they will go the right way. They'll follow the Lord the right way. Jesus said the blind lead the blind they will both fall into the ditch. But the true and living way that we're talking about today is a middle-of-the-road gospel. It's a middle-of-the-road way. And if you serve the Lord and follow Jesus, he'll lead you right down the middle of the road. Those ditches that he's talking about are religious extremes. That's when we get, we get to listening to many voices to the right or we get to listening to many voices to the left and we'll, we might wind up in the ditch that they're in. <laughs> we might wind up in that left ditch. And we'll listen to many voices to the right. We might line, uh, wind up in that to right ditch. And see, this is something that, that Paul and the apostles had to deal with when they wrote those letters. You know, we wouldn't have hardly any New Testament if there wasn't problems in the churches. People say, oh, I don't want to go to church anymore. There's too many hypocrites there. Well, just come on and there'll be one more. So, you know, and so they, they don't want to go to church and they've, they've got a lot of faults and they ah, this is going wrong and this is going wrong and they're complaining and hollering and everything. But God, <laughs> yeah, hypocrites need church too, don't they? So God is trying to lead us to right in the living way down the middle of the road and it's not easy. In the book of, of uh, Acts, Paul was talking about that there were many people that were converted around the 15th chapter of Acts, and he told them that with he taught them that with much tribulation shall they enter into life. With much tribulation, there's that word S T R A I T, straight suffering way. With much tribulation we enter into life. It's not an easy way, but it's a glorious way, isn't it? We might go through some things, but the Lord lets us once in a while feel a little bit about this high off the floor when the Holy Ghost moves on us and the Spirit of God touches us. And when we get sick, the Lord heals us. He helps us. And we get a little bit behind on a bill. He encourages us and strengthens us. 
<clears throat> the other day, I, I ran out of money before I ran out of month. <laughs> you ever been that way? Run out of money before you run out of month? <laughs> and you're sitting there, oh, Lord, these people are going to come. You know, if it was England, they'd be knocking on your door, sending the heises to your door to put you in debtor's prison if you, if you got behind on your bill. Thank God we don't live that way over here. And I prayed and I talked to the Lord that God would help me work it out. And another check came through the mail. It was late because of all that ice and snow and everything. And, and a lot of the mail had been slowed down and everything. And another check came through and I was able to pay that last bill. And, uh, you know, it, I maybe lived on gravy and pork and beans or a little bit. but uh, And the gravy looked kind of thin. <laughs> but the Lord helped me pay that bill and helped me get through the other side. So even though we're, we're, we're sometimes look like we're in a suffering way, and with much tribulation, we're, we're, we're going to enter into life. But God's going to have a pure and an honest people that have been tried and they have been tested. If you haven't been tried, if you've been tested, if, if you never went through anything, how you know that the Lord is with you? How you know the Lord is among you? But sometimes we, we go through things, don't we? We suffer a few things. But Jesus said, I will never leave you. Always remember that. That when you're going through something, you can call on the Lord. He is your Savior. He is your Jesus. Not just mom and dad and grandpa and grandpa's Savior. And they've talked you into going to church and you started going to church with them. But after a while, he becomes your personal Savior. He becomes your Lord. God the Father becomes your God. Praise God. There was something that Ruth saw in Naomi. That when she had lost her sons, there in the land of Moab, and she had lost Elie, her husband, she still believed in God. Although she was a little bitter over it because she had suffered so much. But did she quit the Lord? No. In fact, she packed up and got ready to cross the Jordan and go back to Israel. She didn't quit the Lord. She kept on serving God. And Ruth watched her spirit. Ruth, do you know there are people that are watching? They're watching us. They're watching our spirit. They watch how we handle our problems. Watch to see if we're going to give up. It says that in the book of, of Romans. It said for the creature, it's, it said, what does it say in the Romans, the 16th chapter, 8th chapter. For the creature... Yeah, for the earnest expectation of the creature. That's the everyday person out here. They have an earnest expectation. What? To really see the manifestation of the sons or children of God. They want to see it. They want to see a real Christian manifest Christ in their life. The whole world really is in the back of their mind. They're hungering to see a, a real church come through the fire, and out on the other side manifesting Jesus Christ. They want to see it. That's their earnest expectation. They want to see somebody manifest Christ. They don't want to see another man fail, although they act like they do. They don't really. They really want to see somebody make it out on the other side. They want to see somebody live this life that we preach and teach and come out on the other side with the victory. They're looking for it. And Jesus is going to have that kind of church without spot, without blemish, or without anything. And that's the people that have gone through some things and have come out on the other side. And they, what have they done? And they said in the book of Revelation, who are these people right here? These are they, the angel said, that have taken their garments and washed them white in the blood of the Lamb. By faith, they have stepped forward and they've asked the Lord to help them. They've taken their garments. That means by faith they've grasped a hold of something, grabbed it, and washed them white in the blood of the Lamb. See, what did they come through? What did it say first? These are they which came what? Out of great tribulation. 
So it doesn't tell us that we're not going to have tribulation. We're going to have it. We're going to go through battles. We're going to go through suffering. But it shows you right there that these people were given white robes, which is eternal life. When you receive a white robe, you've received eternal life. White robes were given to them, it said. <laughs> Praise God. They came through out on the other side. And they received, that, they received eternal life. We're not a people that doesn't have a goal, doesn't have a vision. On the contrary, we do have a goal. We do have a vision, overcoming sin and, and, and coming through the victorious on the other side. And then white robes given to us. And we receive eternal life by the grace and mercy and by the power of the God that we serve. So we're not a defeated people. We're a conquering people. As the scripture said, ye should be made more than conquered. Paul said, I am more than a conqueror. Through Christ that strengtheneth me, showing that we're not going to do this on our own. You know, some people, if they can't do things with their own mental calisthenics, if they can't do it themselves and figure it out themselves, they don't figure like they're, they're going to be able to make it. But you got to get to the place after a while that it's more than what you have in your mind. It's more than you can figure out. It's more than you can take a slide rule or a calculator and figure out. You've got to have your faith in the Lord. We've got to put our confidence in him. In that third chapter of Acts, it said, Paul gave us a, a, a picture right there of salvation and then what's coming after that. He said, repent, didn't he? Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Then the next verse said, and he shall send Jesus. So what's happening? Jesus is coming. You hear what I'm saying today? He is coming and he shall send Jesus, which before was preached unto you. And that's a promise from the apostle Paul that God gave us as our apostle. And he shall send Jesus. So Jesus is first coming in a victorious people. Praise God. And it's not an easy thing, but God is going to help us be victorious. You know, that's something to shout about. That's something to praise God about. We were going one way, and the Lord put that crossroad across us and let us see that we need to make a decision and start doing things God's way. Start following him God's way. Then we'll have a church, like the scripture said, filled with overcomers. Doesn't happen overnight, but it's a process and a struggle. A war is not finished in one battle. A war has a lot of battles, doesn't it? Some of them we lose, some of them we win. But we come out victoriously on the other side and win the war. You ever look at the enemy of your soul right in his eye and say, oh, you might have won this one, buddy, but it ain't over yet. <laughs> it ain't over yet. I ain't giving up. Like we sing a song sometime, I'm not about to quit. Because if we don't, if we'll have faith and confidence in the Lord, and that's what faith is. Faith has three parts. One is we believe in him. We come to that crossroad and we come to that place and we were going our own way. And Jesus presented his way to us. When we got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and we begin to hear this beautiful middle of the road teaching, then we start on the right way. And then the second part of faith is we trust him. Which 41. And the world was sent right back into turmoil. Did the people quit? They said, no. During that time, you know, when things were hard, you know, when people made a dollar a day if they made good money, a dollar a day if they made good money. And it seemed like hard, but they trusted in the Lord and they kept their confidence in him and they kept looking towards him and they were powerful churches that came out of those times, powerful churches. And I remember that uh, when I was first coming around the body of Jesus Christ that that uh, I was new, and I didn't know a lot of things about the body. I didn't know a lot of the teachings, that, and I still had a lot of problems in my life. 
But the, there was something about the body of Jesus Christ, something about that glorious church that's being pulled through the fire, out of the fire, and is going to stand in the, in the light of God's presence one day as his church, his church, his people. Because, you know, Israel was to be his people. He chose them out of all the world. Their commission was to show the rest of the world what the will of God was. And they failed in their covenant with God. They broke their covenant and they failed in the commission that God gave them. But there's a glorious church that's coming out of the wilderness, that's coming out of the battles, that's coming out of the storms, coming out of the struggle on the other side. And they're holding on to the garments of Jesus Christ and believing in him. And that church is going to rise victorious, praise God. Amen. And so we've seen a lot of things happen in the world. We've seen things happen in the church. Paul, <clears throat> Paul wrote about these things and then to encourage you a little bit, then I'm going to step down. But you see that the letters that they wrote right there, if, you didn't, if there wasn't any trouble going on, you wouldn't have those letters. But there was trouble going on. Because when you come up with this brand new idea, this brand new way that wasn't going the rest of the way that the rest of the world was going, you go to Corinth, there's a temple on every corner to some God that they worship. But then when the Christians begin to come to Corinth, they begin to show them a more excellent way, a different and a more excellent way. And, it, and when they came to Asia around Ephesus, look at all the trouble that Alexander gave them because he, he worshiped a God named Diana and because they were talking about a new and more precious, a real way. God was healing, working miracles, and they were seeing it with their own eyes, but they didn't want to let go of that other way. So there was a lot of trouble that went on, a lot of persecution against the people, and a lot of falsehoods began to rise up. If you remember starting in the, around the 15th, 13th, and uh, 15th chapter of Acts, you'll see a group of people that was sent to the church deliberately to try to split and divide the church. The Pharisees and Sadducees, they never agreed on anything. But they came up with this, with this class or sect of people that they aimed right at the church to try to split the church because they knew a great deal of the church were Jewish people. So they sent the, what is called, history calls, the Ebionites. The Ebionites believed that you can be a Christian as long as you were circumcised and kept the law. As long as you were circumcised and kept the law, you could go ahead and believe in Jesus Christ and the teachings of the church, but you had to do that because Jesus was a Jew and the church started out that way and they were always trying to bring people back out of the church into their Jewish only club. And this, the Ebionites were, were a strong infection. They, they really uh, gave a lot of trouble to the church. But you see where Paul in the book of Galatians, he dealt with that subject. He, he, in the letter to the Galatians, he dealt with that subject. And then they had the meeting in Jerusalem where uh, James stood up and sent out instructions to all the churches. And that, and that began to defuse and unplug the uh, doctrine of the Ebionites. But that wasn't the first thing. There were other groups. That, so the Essenes came in and tried to, tried to break up the church. And then there were a couple of brethren that got up and preached that the resurrection had already passed. And they began to try to infect the church with false doctrine. So you see, it isn't the first time that the church had trouble. The church had trouble from the very beginning. But they came through. My encouraging words is don't quit. Don't give up. Because we'll come through. We'll come through the other side. And it will be a glorious church. Amen. You see, Jesus is not going to marry just anything out here. People are trying to make him an arranged marriage. They're trying to make Jesus a, an arranged marriage that he's going to marry all this conglomeration out here. They take all these religious philosophies and put it together and they call that the body of Christ. No, it's not the body of Christ. The body of Christ has specific earmarks that identify the body of Jesus Christ that identifies the beautiful church of Jesus Christ and the woman that one day he's going to marry. Oh, glory to God. There's going to be a wedding supper after a while. <laughs> There's
there's going to be a wedding supper after a while. But Jesus, he chooses his own bride. Praise God. And we're just trying to make ourselves ready, aren't we? This is the dressing room. We're going through and we're looking in the mirror like those priests looked in that laver, looked in those, those shining polished brass around the bottom of that laver to see if there was any spots on their garments. They can get ready to do the, the Lord's service. We're the same way. We're in a dressing room. We're getting the wedding garment on. We're looking to see if there's any spots or any blemishes or anything that offends the Lord and get rid of that out of our life. Praise God. Because there's going to be a wedding supper after a while. There's going to be a joyous event that's going to take place after a while. He is going to send Jesus after a while. And he's going to stand up in his church and stand up among his people with power like this world has never seen before. Hallelujah. And we're just wanting to get ready. We're just trying to get ready. Or we're trying to get dressed. <laughs> Praise God for that's going to take place. Amen. Aren't you glad today? Amen. To have seen this wonderful way that the Lord has shown us and how that Jesus is going to come back in a people. And this world is going to be shocked to see this people. We might be out on the backside of the desert. God's getting us ready to cross over Jordan. But one day we're going to be ready. One day Joshua looked at him and said, make ready, because we're fixing to cross over. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Amen. That other generation had died off the scene and gone, and he looked at this one. He said, make ready. He said, because we're fixing to cross over. Hallelujah. Amen. And when the feet of those priests begin to touch that water of the banks of Jordan, that water rolled back. Praise God. And they were ready to cross over. So we may be seeing some troubles and battles, but we look at the enemy of our soul and we say, hey, buddy, it ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. We got a few more battles to go, but we're going to win some. We're going to be more than conquerors. We're going to be victorious. And this powerful church that steps out on the scene, the world has never seen anything like it. Never seen anything like it. Because the light... Of the, of the latter church will be even brighter than the light of the early church. Can you imagine that? You see how bright and powerful that early church was? And it said that the light of this latter church will be even greater and brighter. Praise God. Well, that's from a people that says, I refuse to quit until I obtain my blessing, until I obtain my promise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jacob could have quit, couldn't he? Yeah. He was camped right there between Ai and Bethel. And Ai means ruinous heaps. And Bethel means house of God. Look where he was camped right there. Glory to God. But he chose the way of the Lord. Yeah. And he came out on the other side with his blessing. Yeah. Praise God. And we are too, are we? We, are. we chose the way of the Lord. Yeah. We're going to come out on the other side with our blessing. Yeah. Praise God with our blessing one day. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. Our sister don't have anything to worry about. We got Brother Matthew here today. I'm gonna pull one on him that he did, he doesn't remember. Do you realize that 
you're in the only battle right now that you're guaranteed winner. You may, you, you, you may pick up a few scars along the way. You may have a few nicks and bumps and bruises. And I'll even, I'll, I'll even go farther than that. I'll even promise you, you're going to have some nicks and bruises and bumps. You're going to go through some things. But if you don't give it up and you just keep on reaching out for God, you're a guaranteed winner. <clears throat> Let's put it about right there. That's good enough. I've enlisted as a soldier in this mighty army band Marching out the battle with my weapon in my hand Heard the captain give the order that don't include retreat And we're marching along the border to a land of no Please don't tell me who's gonna fight Who's gonna win Who's gonna lose And who's gonna win Will you cry to the enemy you meet Or be a soldier in the army Standing on your feet Up on this rock I'll build my church Let old Satan try For the gates of hell cannot prevail And here's the reason why Jesus raised the flag on Calvary Made sweet victory complete And if we're made more than conquerors Satan more than be Tell me who gonna fight who's gonna win who's gonna lose and who's gonna win will you cry I surrender to the enemy you meet or be a soldier in the army standing on his feet so tell me who's gonna fight who's giving in who's gonna lose and who's gonna win will you cry I surrender to the enemy you meet Or be a soldier in the army Standing on his feet Up on this rock I'll build my church Let old Satan cry For the gates of hell cannot prevail And here's the reason why Jesus raised the flag on Calvary Made sweet victory complete And if we're made more than conquerors Satan more than me Tell me who's gonna fight Who's gonna win? Who's gonna lose? And who's gonna win? Will you cry? I surrender to the enemy you meet. Or be a soldier in the army standing on his feet. I've enlisted as a soldier in this mighty army band. I'm marching out to battle with my weapon in my hand. And Captain, give the order. That don't include retreat, but march another border to a land of no defeat. Don't tell me who's gonna fight, who's giving in, who's gonna lose, friend, who's gonna win. Will you cry, I surrender to the enemy you meet, or be a soldier in the army standing on his feet? So tell me who's gonna fight. Who's giving in? Who's gonna lose? And who's gonna win? Will you cry, I surrender to the enemy you meet? Or be a soldier in the army standing on his feet? Up on this rock I'll build my church and let old Satan try. For the gates of hell cannot prevail and here's the reason why. Jesus raised the flag on Calvary, made sweet victory complete. And if we're made more than conquerors, Satan more than me, tell me who's gonna fight. Who's giving in? Who's gonna lose? And who's gonna win? Will you cry, I surrender to the enemy you meet? Or be a soldier in the army standing on his feet? So tell me who's gonna fight and who's giving in? Who's gonna lose and who's gonna win? Will you cry, I surrender to the enemy you meet? Or be a soldier in the army standing on his feet? I've enlisted as a soldier in this mighty army band. 
And I'm marching out to battle with a weapon in my hand. Heard the captain give the order, friend, they don't include retreat. Heard marching all the borders to a land of no defeat. So tell them who's gonna fight, who's giving in, who's gonna lose, and who's gonna win. Will you cry I surrender to the head of a soldier in the army standing on his feet. Have you done this? I've enlisted as a soldier in this mighty army band. And we're marching out the battle with the weapon in my hand. Heard the captain give the order. Friend, they don't include retreat. We're marching over the border to a land of no defeat. So tell me who's gonna fight? Who's giving in? Who's gonna lose and who's gonna win? Will you cry, I surrender to the enemy you meet? Or be a soldier in the army standing on his feet? So tell me who's gonna fight? Who's giving in? Who's gonna lose and who's gonna win? Will you cry, I surrender to the enemy you meet? I'll be a soldier in the army standing on his feet. Up on this rock I'll build my church. Let old Satan try, for the gates of hell cannot prevail. And here's the reason why. Jesus raised the flame on Calvary, made sweet victory complete. And if we're made more than conquerors, friend Satan, more than me, tell me to Who's gonna lose and who's gonna win? Will you cry, I surrender to the enemy you meet? Come on now, see a soldier in the army standing on his feet. So tell me who's gonna fight? Who's giving in? Who's gonna lose and who's gonna win? Will you cry, I surrender? To the enemy you meet, or be a soldier in the army standing on his feet. Glory! Glory! Woo! You know, when you're a soldier, when, they, when, when, when that, that uh, officer tells you to do something, brother, you don't tell him, nah, I don't think I want to do that today. Yeah, I just... I remember, I remember, I remember one of the brothers. You can be seated if you want to. I, I, I'm not going to be here for just a couple of minutes. But I remember one of the brothers said one time. He said, said he went up there and he said, uh, his commanding officer. He just he just been enlisted in the in the service, and he said uh, his his uh, uh, commanding officer walked in there and told said, all right, I want you to. I think it was clean the latrine. I don't, I don't remember what it was. I think it was clean the latrine. And so I looked over and said, you want that thing clean, go clean it yourself. He said, what did I want to tell him that for? He said, I didn't think I was ever going to get out of that latrine. They kept me there, and I kept doing it over and over and over and over. Why? He was teaching him obedience. Let me tell you something. You want to know why sometimes you go through a lot of stuff? You tell God, well, if you want it done, God, you get somebody else to do it. So God loves to keep taking you through it and taking you through it and taking you through it. It's kind of like, kind of like that man was. I heard, heard a testimony from a man one time. He said, yeah, he said, said he went up there and he wanted the Holy Ghost. And he was always real. He was a proud man. You know, he was, I don't know, a banker or something. He was, he was proud. And he, he goes up there and he says, I, you know, I, I think I want that Holy Ghost. He, he went to somebody behind the scenes and said, I think I want that Holy Ghost. You're talking about. He said, really? He said, all of a sudden, the, the priest of the God spoke to him and said, take him down to the pig pen. He said, well, come on. God said he's going to give it to you. All right. So he walked out there and he took him out to the pig, pig pen where all the slop and all the smell is. And he looked at him and said, what are we doing down here? He said, God said he's going to give you the Holy Ghost. He said, man, I don't need the Holy Ghost here. He said, let's go up yonder. God said it had to be here. 
Ah, I'm not getting out of that. I'm getting out of that, that slop. And, no, no, I ain't going. He walked away. Kept going along, kept going along. He kept feeling something pulling on him, kept pulling on him, kept pulling on him. Finally, he looked at him. He said, man, I got to have that Holy Ghost. He said, okay, let's go. Let's go to the pig pier. He said, man, can't we, can't we just pray right here in the church? No, got to go to the pig pier. I can't do it. He walked away again. So, so he comes up, he comes up a third time and said, he, the God was really dealing with him. He said, man, I got to have that Holy Ghost. He said, let's go to the pig pier. He said, okay, let's go. He said, no, you can get it here. He said, no, you said we got to go to the pig pier. He said, no, I said, you had to be willing to go to the pig pen. Now that you're willing to go to the pig pen, God can give you the Holy Ghost anywhere. And he got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you something. You, a lot of times you don't get things in your life because you're not willing to do what God said do. Do you really think that Joseph liked everything he had to go through? You stop and think about it now. Here he was. He was a favorite of his father. He has a dream. His brothers get jealous. His dad sends him out there to take him some other. They get him, and they throw him. They're, they're going to kill him. And they decide, well, we'll just throw him down a well and let you die. So they put him down the well. And the older brother said, you did that where he come back and get him later. So uh, then the other guy said, well, why, do, why have blood on our hands? And there, there's a troop over here. Let's just settle them. They'll let them go sell them in Egypt. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. So they, they, went, they went and sold him into Egypt. Now understand, here he was, favorite of his father, had a dream from the Lord, went out to see his brothers, was going to be killed, thrown in a well, now he's going down to Egypt. Okay? Woo-hoo. Goes down to Egypt, and God starts working for him, and God starts blessing him, and he gets up there and he, he, he gets in Potiphar and Potiphar's household and he, he becomes second, second in command and you know, Potiphar gives him, tells him to do everything he wants to do and all of a sudden Potiphar's wife looks at him and wants him and he said, I can't do that. Said, he said, your husband gave me everything. That I, I'm in charge of everything. He said, the only thing he held back from me is you. I can't, I can't sin against him and God like that. And she tried to compel him, and he said, he, he broke away. Well, she grabbed his coat, and he, and he, had, he had his coat. And what she do? She said, he, he goes up there, and he, try, he tries to uh, throw himself on me. Now, all this has been going on. He's worked his way up to where he's got a good job again. Now what happens? Woo, he goes down to the prison dungeon. Uh. Now he's working, he's working his way up, working his way up. He, he, he gets, he gets uh, you know, he's trying to work his way back up again. And he gets up to where he's uh, uh, there uh, with one of the jailers. Uh, he, he gets uh, honored with, with, with the jailer, so they, they give him the keys, let him go around. He has a few more privileges than the other prisoner, but he's still a prisoner. He can't go anywhere he wants to go. He's still got to do everything everybody else tells him, tells him to do. And all of a sudden, two men have a dream. And God gives them the interpretation of the dreams. <laughs> and he said, well, hey, one of them, one of them, you know, was getting, getting the, the bird, you know, he's going to get his head lifted off his shoulders and, you know, and the bird's going to pick his flesh off his bone. The other one, the other one was going to get put back in where he was at. He said, when you go there, would you, would you let the, would you let him know what I, you know, I, I, I said, I've, I've been doing wrong, and I'm down here, and I ain't done nothing wrong. Whew. Everything happens just exactly like, it, like, like uh, God said it was going to happen. And guess what? When he got back in place, he just forgot all about him. He's still down there in the prison. That's right. He was with Joseph, but he's with Joseph in the prison. It doesn't make any difference where you're at. If you walk for God, God will be there with you. He'll walk through the He'll walk through He'll walk through fire with you. If you don't If you don't believe so, look look at the three Hebrew children. 
Hey, I, did we throw three in there? I see four. He said, the four will look just like a son of God. You ever wonder how they knew what the son of God was to look like? Hmm. Let me tell you something. You live upright before God. One of these days, if you can put off our old sinful flesh, maybe, maybe, Brother Hack, I can look at Brother Hack and see what Jesus looks like. Woo! Wouldn't that be great? Oh, that I, I can look at Brother Hack and say, hey, you want, you want to know what a Christian is? You go look at Brother Hack over here. Man, he is a Christian. He, he does everything just like Jesus would do. Wow, what a compliment. Hey, he's working on it. Ain't none of us there yet, but we're all working on it. And one of these days, if we'll hang tight, we can do it. You can do it. God promised you, you could do it. He's coming after a bride without a spot, wrinkle, or a blemish. You ever examine those three things? A spot is something that's on a garment that really ought not be there, like, you know, we got dirt or something like that. It's a spot. A blemish is, is, a, is a defect in the material itself. Maybe it's something you believe. Maybe it's something that it goes, it's, it's, a, it's a blemish. But you know, a wrinkle is not a spot. It's not an abnormality in the material or the garment. You just ain't got it all ironed out right yet. Got to have a little more heat. <laughs> but, you know, God is looking for somebody like that. What does that mean, brother? That means you got to stay for the process. If you'll stay for the process, it's amazing. But you know what? He made you a promise. He said if you'll stay for the process, you won't lose. You may, go, you may go down still striving to get there, but you'll come back up right where you were at, and you'll get the opportunity to, to overcome. And that, isn't that what we want? Oh, I, I better shut up. I, you know, I, I, I can go to preach. I, I tell you what, stirred me up today. That was good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something, church. If you just let God move, you'll be surprised at what he'll do. You might be surprised the way he'll do it, too, you know, because he, he, he ain't going to do it the way you expect him to do it. But if you'll stay in the process, whew, he can make a thing. He won't burn you, I promise you. He'll put the fire to you, but he won't, he won't burn you. He won't destroy you. He will make a way of escape. That's the reason the Bible says, you know, you go into any kind of trial, there's a way of escape. Why? He's not going to burn you. He's not going to destroy you. God is going to do what you need to move more like him. Huh? Amen. I am appreciative of this today. Um, the encouragement to go on through whatever it is we've got to endure. And the Lord, like we just saw there when you were going through that, the Lord was with Joseph in prison. And he was with, and when you go back and you read... And the scriptures, you look back in those people in the Old Testament, time after time after time, every one of them come through difficulties, adversities, yes. obstacles, uh, some greater than others, some 
uh, easy to overcome, some very hard to overcome. And as Brother Holt was ministering here, the, the, uh, the idea that God's going to have a people and that are coming through all this with his help, with his strength, uh, we cannot do it without him, and he's not going to do it without us. He's, he wants to use a church. He wants to use vessels. He wants to use lamps to shine his light through, to reflect him. And that's what he said. Let, soul, let your light so shine before men that they would look on you and see the light. That is the light that's coming from him into us, into this vessel, into these lives. And sometimes he's, they see that when we're in trouble, when we're in prison, when we're sick, when we're weak, when we're uh, enduring hardness. And they see us going through all this because we're not immune. And if we, if we see that, what I, I was thinking, and when you went to that in uh, Corinthians, talking about Paul, the Apostle Paul, and what he was enduring there, I, I looked and I read through that again, and I want to, I want to just read that and touch on that. In is it Second Corinthians eleven? Second Corinthians eleven, and it, it's just encouraging. It sounds like it's. It would not be encouraging when you go through and list all these difficulties and things, but when you see why he was listing them. He wasn't listing them in bitterness. He wasn't going back and saying, look what God drugged me through. I can't believe he, he made me go through this and that and the other. But he was, he was bringing it up to show and glory in the fact that he came through all that. And he goes uh, that... Uh, if you don't mind, go up to uh, twenty-four, and just he just starts going through some of the things that he endured. And we're talking about a, a great apostle, one of the greatest examples of a follower of Christ, one that was working for him diligently. And he endured these things. So we also are going to go through things. But look, of the Jews, five times received our 40 stripes, save one. He, all right, that's saying right there, on five occasions, he was beat with 39 stripes on five different occasions. You think, well, he was a, he was a Christian, a follower of Christ, a one of the leaders of the church, one of the great apostles? Yes. Look at the next one. Thrice, that's three times, I was beaten with rods. Once was I stoned, and that wasn't him smoking marijuana. He wasn't smoking weed. He was hit with rocks. He was stoned. Some people don't know what that means, stoned. Some people think stone means Smoking weed and getting high. He wasn't doing, that ain't the high, the, the, the stone he's talking about. He's talking about he was pelted with rocks. Thrice, three more times, I suffered shipwreck. I was on a, on a ship that literally wrecked. It crashed. It, it went aground. It was sinking. I was on three of those. Not just one, three times he was in that situation. A night and a day have I been in the deep, like he said. That's not a good place to be. You think, and this man's following Christ, and Christ is with him, and he's, uh, this is what I'm going to, I want to follow somebody like this. If, he, if this is what he's enduring, look at the next one. In journeys, in journeyings often, in perils of waters. Perils are, is danger. Literally in danger, not danger around over there, but him himself in danger, danger of drowning, danger of whatever was in the water, in perils of robbers, danger of people robbing him. 
robbers, in perils of mine own countrymen, in perils of the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. Perils, danger, all. I went through a lot of dangerous situations. He didn't, he didn't have, God didn't uh, let him avoid all that. He went through all that. Look at the next one. In weariness. Yes, he was weary. He was he was tired. He was fatigued and painfulness in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. There was times he went without, times he didn't have everything, all the comforts, and then keep going. Beside those things, if that wasn't enough, besides all that other stuff that are without, that which cometh upon me daily the care of all the churches. I got, a, I got all the people's burdens on me, their worries, their concerns. How are these people, are they getting the direction they need? Am I teaching them? Are they getting this gospel? Uh, all that care was on him in addition to his own personal experiences. And go to the next one. Who is weak and I'm not weak? Who is offended and I burn not? In other words, I, go, I get weak. I get offended. And people, you know, other people are offended and I'm not. I'm getting, I, get, I get offended too. And then he goes on. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. That's uh, 30. Let me look here. 31. That is his sufferings, his if I'm going, and, and he's glorying in the fact that I've come through all this with his help, with his strength, with his assistance. Yes, I've suffered. Yes, it's been difficult. Yes, it's been hard. But I have come through every single one of these situations with his help. And I am, I am better because of it, actually. And then he goes on, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which is blessed. He's, look how he's still talking about God and Christ. They're blessed forevermore. Knoweth that I, they know I'm not lying. In other words, I'm not creating a fake uh, uh, biography, a fake, uh, uh, what do you call it, resume. I'm not making this resume up. We've had recent politicians completely make up their history and their background and what they've done and they come to find out none of that was true about them. Paul's giving them the truth. He said, look, Jesus, God in heaven and Jesus, no, I'm not lying. I went through all this stuff. And then he goes, uh, he says, in the, uh, and then he goes into 32 there, in Damascus, the governor under Aratus, the king, kept the city of Damascus, I mean the Damascenes, with a garrison, desirous to apprehend me, a whole bunch of troops looking for him. And through a window in the basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. In that particular case, he fled the city. There are times he fled difficulties, he, and the Lord let him out of that. That's how he got out of that that time. He was let over the wall in a basket, and he ran off and went on about his business preaching. Other times, he, he knew that things were waiting him, and he didn't, it wasn't time to, to flee. It wasn't time to run. It was time to go face it. And then even, and I'm not going to go there, but later, it, when he was on his way, there were people prophesying, you're going to be in bonds. You're going to face afflictions. He said, these things neither move me, neither I count my life dear but I'm going to go. I'm going to go on. And it's the same thing with us. Uh, look at Philippians. No, go under that next chapter, that 12th chapter. And he goes on down in there. And I'm not going to go there, but the seventh verse talks about him being buffeted with a, mess, uh, with a messenger because of these uh, the abundance of revelations. In other words, because of all this that I understand and I know, there is a thorn given me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. In other words, 
there, there were some things afflicting him that was to keep him humble, that was to keep him from getting too exalted. And, and sometimes we need to look at some of the things in our lives. It could just be that some things are there to just give you enough difficulty to let you know you still need his help. You still need his help. And you're not going to get too high and minded, too, too exalted in what you know. This, this, can, this can really go to our head, what he is allowing us to see and what he allows us to know. It's a great knowledge. It's a great, and knowledge puffeth up. God, knowledge can make you think more of yourself because he's let you know some things. But sometimes some things are just there to keep you from getting too high and too exalted. It's to keep you from getting exalted above measure. And then he, he goes on, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice and it might depart from me. And in the ninth verse, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. And he's, he's saying that to you right now. His grace is sufficient for you with whatever you're facing whatever you're going through, whatever it is you are walking in, whatever boat you're on that's uh, shaken, whatever uh, illness you're going through, whatever difficulty, uh, uh, obstacles, his grace is sufficient for you. And my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. See, sometimes we're going through things and it's, it's bringing about the power of Christ resting on you. And if that's what's coming about, that's a good thing. It's a, it's a positive. If, and, if, and if it takes this going through a sickness to get that to rest upon me, then I'd like to be willing to do that and not lose my confidence. And, and then you see in uh, Hebrews 10:35. He says, cast not away your confidence. Why would, you have to, why would he have to say that? Because sometimes it's challenging for us to not throw our confidence away. When we're going through all this, when we're in the battle, when we're in the furnace, when we're in the den with the lions, when we're in the ship, the prison, the, the, the job situation, the family situation, the chaos... Sometimes we're, we're tempted to just cast her. He's not helping me. It's, it, I wouldn't be going through all this if he was with me. Surely Joseph had those kinds of thoughts, but he, he knew when he, when he thought it through, when you, when you sit and think it through, you, you say, you know, I'm, I can't cast away my confidence. I can't, which hath great report, recompense of reward. In other words, it's, by not throwing your confidence away, there's a great reward for hanging in there, for hanging in there, for going, using the patience that he's given you. Patience is endurance, patiently enduring, going through, suffering, hardship like a soldier, uh, whatever, and we all face different things. We're all working on getting Christ in us and formed in us and, and, and conquering this nature but each one of us have a specialized, some things that are stronger in your heart than mine, he's got to work with you a little different in that specific thing. And I may have a, a stronghold over here that you've already conquered easily. You may have conquered it within the fir first few days of your walk in Christ. And here I am 35, 40 years later, I'm still fighting that. Whereas over here, I may have taken care of something right away and you're still fighting that okay so then that back in Hebrews uh, cast not away uh, yes the next one please for ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God ye might receive the promise that's saying go through it don't give up in the middle of it don't throw in the towel don't say it's all I'm done with this hang in there the next one for yet a little while, and he shall come. Will he that shall he that shall come will come and will not tarry. There'll be a time 
when he'll say, peace be still. There'll be a time when you've come out on the other side of that. And, but we want to let it ha do its work. In some things, it's fire baptism, and it takes heat, as you said, on uh, a wrinkle. It takes heat and pressure to get wrinkle out of a garment. And we don't like heat and pressure. We'd like to just throw it in the dryer and, and let it be done really quick and hopefully we can do it on the air setting where it's not hot. But that don't usually work. And to really, and then the, the spots, the stains, those things, and we're working on all that. And some things come take a little bit more work. And like some have used this illustration, when, we're, when you're sick or you're hurting or there's something, an infirmity in your soul, something that the Lord has to work on and remove, sometimes it takes surgery. It takes some, sur some surgeries are major surgeries and, you, and you're going under the knife. You're going in and it's painful and it hurts when they go in and they're cutting out something. But it's a good thing if they're removing something and going through the pain, the hurt, the, the, the recovery time. Uh, but, but if he can get that out and you can come out on the other side and you go into recovery and you come out of there and you say, you know what? I had cancer. I don't have cancer anymore. I had this organ failing and he put, he put an, I got a transplant and they gave me another organ. Whatever the case is, you come out of there and you can look back and you're not going to cry about Oh, I had to go into the surgery. You're going to say, I came, I went into surgery and they took care of me. And I came out and I'm better. And that's gone and he got, they got it out. Sometimes in our hearts, God's got to go in. He's got to go in and it ain't pleasant. It ain't enjoyable. But he's got to, some things are deeply entrenched in us. And he's got to go in there and, and use a sharp instrument and cut it out. And it hurts. And sometimes we don't want to go to the appointment for surgery. We know it's going to hurt. We know 8 o'clock Monday morning is surgery day. Unfortunately, the Lord don't make us appointments like that when he's dealing with things. I might have, I might have hid from some of them. I might have said, you know, I can't make that one. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, well, you want to keep that? You can keep it. But the Lord sometimes just starts working. This is where it's our job to recognize and pay attention when he's dealing with you, when he's working in your heart, working in your, your mind and, and letting you know this is what I'm working on. And we got to be willing to let him get those blemishes and those wrinkles and those spots because our goal is to be free from all that and, and be pleasing in his sight. But then the next verse there, uh, where were we? Oh, Hebrews. Ten. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. He's saying in, in the middle of all you're going through, don't draw back, don't turn and run, don't break and run, stay with me, keep your hand in my hand, I've got you, I'm with you, I'm, come on, I'm right here with you, I know it's hard, I know it's dark, I know it's scary, I know you're hearing things and sounds that are scaring you and frightening you, but hang in there, stay with me, we're going to get out of this darkness, we're going to come out on the other side, uh, then the next one, but we are not of them, this is one of my favorite scriptures, I mention it a lot because I, I like the encouragement, we are not of them who draw back into perdition. That is, turn around and run back. And as Brother Holt started us out, we were, we were going one way and we come to the crossroads. We come to the way where two ways, met, two ways meet. We, we chose the way of the Lord. We turned from that other way. And now we're going down the narrow path. We're going down the road to righteousness and the right ending. And this is where... That road gets rough. It gets, there's stones on that. It's sharp objects. It's a difficult road. It gets narrow. It gets straight. Everything I started out on that road don't get to go all the way to the end with me. Just like when they were crossing 
into the old west, heading to the west coast. Sometimes they would take wagons full of stuff. About halfway across, they said you'd start seeing piles of stuff, just throwing off. We don't, I'm, I don't want to drag this around no more. And they would just leave it, just dump it off and keep going. And, you know, that's what we've got to do as we're going, as we're walking, as we're journeying. There's things that are, we're going to peel off because that's not necessary. That's not going to help me get to the goal. This is a hindrance. This is a weight. This is something holding me back. This is keeping me from moving forward. Bitterness, envy, strife, jealousies, hatred, anger, all these things, they've got to begin to work, be peeled off because they're robbing us. They're keeping us from being able to run sufficiently. So we began to, as the word of God's working, we're, we're peeling them off. We're getting light. We're getting, we're getting, we're traveling light. And we're to, so light that it just gets to where it's me and Christ. And then finally, it's just Christ. And there's no more room for me. And I step out and I get that last part of me out of the way. And it's no longer I that lives, but it's Christ in me, the hope of glory. And so, but, uh, so by not drawing back into perdition or destruction, we are them that believe to the saving of the soul. That is, I'm not going to turn back. I'm going to keep going all the way to the finish line and get my soul saved. And I was just encouraged by this today that he's, this is what he's looking for, people that will be willing to go through it and hang in there with him. And it's easy. It is so easy to serve him when everything is wonderful and everything is great and there's no friction, no difficulties, no adversity, no hill to climb. It's so easy. But whenever we're climbing a difficult hill and when we get a mistreatment and we're, we're not treated the way we'd like to be treated sometime or go through something that we don't, it's unpleasant. That's when it's hard to keep your faith. And he rewards us that do that. He rewards us for keeping our confidence in him and not casting it aside. So I just say, let's keep going with him. Wherever you are, whatever you're facing, hang in there. Hang in there. You, you've got help. You've got one that's with you. You're not in there all alone. You're going to come out of this. You're going to come out of this with his help and his assistance. So let's keep going with him. Amen. And I feel this precious spirit right from heaven fall By the strength of my God I can on this pathway trot I can do all things through Christ Which strengthens me Oh, I can run through a true I can leap over a wall When I feel this precious spirit right from heaven fall By the strength of my God I can on this pathway trot. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Oh, I can run through a truth. I can leap over a wall. When I feel this precious spirit right from heaven fall, by the strength of my God, I can on this pathway trot. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Oh, I can run through a truth. I can leap over the wall when I feel this precious spirit right from heaven's fall. By the strength of my God, I can on this pathway try. I can do all things to Christ which strengthens me. Oh, I can run through a truth. I can leap over the wall when I feel this precious spirit right from heaven's fall. By the strength of my God, I can on this pathway trot. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Oh, I can run through a truth. I can leap over a wall when I feel this precious spirit right from heaven fall. 
by the strength of my God, I can on this pathway try. I can do all things in Christ which strengthens me. Oh, I can run through a truth. I can leap from the wall when I feel His precious Spirit right from heaven fall. By the strength of my God, I can on this pathway try. I can do all things to Christ which strengthens me. Oh, I can run through a truth. I can leap from the wall when I feel His precious Spirit right from heaven fall. By the strength of my God, I can on this pathway try. I can do all things to Christ which strengthens me. Oh, I can run through a truth. I can leap over a wall when I feel His precious Spirit right from heaven fall. By the strength of my God, I can on this pathway trot. I can do all things in Christ which strengthens me. Oh, I can run through a truth. I can leap over a wall when I feel I can do all things to Christ which strengthens me. Oh, I can run through a truth, and I can leap over a wall when I feel His precious Spirit right from heaven fall. By the strength of my God, I can on this pathway cross. I can do all things to Christ which strengthens me. Ms. Myra, so remember her in prayer, and uh, we appreciate it. Also, uh, also an update on Sister Fricks's attendant, Lupe, that came with her. Her mother and uh, a, ch a small child were in an accident. They rolled the vehicle three times, and neither one was wearing a seat belt. But they've come through the accident. The the her mother almost uninjured, almost unscathed. That's a miracle. It's a miracle. And the and the little boy didn't have any broken bones, no concussion. He was just scraped up. Uh, they're gonna be back. Sister Lupe, uh, Sister Fricks's attendant. She wants to come back and see us and visit us. Yes. And uh, but she's got the flu now, so that's why she's not. 
there with Sister Frick currently, but just wanted to give that. Thank, thank you all for praying for them. Uh, didn't look very good at all initially for that little boy, but like I said, he came through it okay. So they appreciate your prayers. Praise God. Well, you you got something to say. Fellowship. That's why I'm, Paul said it was important for us to fellowship, to come together. We need that strength of our brothers and sisters. Amen. So let's be praying that God will guide them and direct them. Sister Andrea? Yeah. Well, as we dismiss today, let's take these requests to the Lord. We believe in God, don't we? Yes. We believe that God hears us. Amen. So let's let's pray that the Lord will touch these requests today. 